Hi, I'm Alex Silber with Papaya Tree Nursery. It's mid-June 2010, a few days away from summer, and right around now is a good time to begin hand pollinating your cherimoya. That is, if you live in a climate that is very hot and dry, you'll need to do that to get a good amount of fruit. Folks that live closer to the ocean where there's a lot more humidity in the air, within 15 miles or so, won't need to rely on hand pollinating as much. But for those of us who live in the San Fernando Valley or in Simi Valley and areas like that, you need to do that. You only need a couple pieces of equipment. It's very simple to do, mind you. A little small paintbrush like this and a little black plastic container. We use black because it contrasts with the pollen. Cherimoya tree is considered an evergreen. In other words, it won't lose its leaves or defoliate during winter. But it does drop its leaves in April. Soon as it does that, it comes right back with new growth, flowers and leaves. There'll be a tendency to want to pollinate then, but really you should wait a good month to two months until it's leafed out further. That's a good time to start beginning to pollinate. And you have a few months to do that, so there's no rush. You can come out every other day between 4 and 7 p.m. and take your time and do that. So all you need to do is be able to identify between a male and a female flower. And this is how you do that. Right over here, we have an example of that. This right here is a female stage where the flower has opened about halfway. But sometimes it's getting a little too close to male stage. And if you're not sure because of lack of experience, a safe bet would be to go with this stage right here where the tips of the petals have just separated. That is good enough. You can gather pollen and insert it at that point, at this stage of the flower. The first step is to identify a, a male flower, which we've done right here, and put this black plastic container underneath it, or a 35 millimeter film container, and basically tap the flower, like so, with the container underneath it, and you collect some pollen. That's pretty much all you need to do. Now you're going to see some large pieces in there. Those are the anthers or the male, uh, male sexual organ. And that's where the pollen is housed. But you look for the powdery stuff. That's the pollen itself. That's the stuff you want to get on the tip of your brush. And that's it. Now you go to a female flower and you're ready to go. As soon as you collect the pollen, use it that same hour. So here I am collecting a little pollen here. And if you see, I don't know if you can catch that, but it's, it's in there. And cover this to make sure you don't lose it. And I'm going to go to this flower with the petals just opening at the tips. And insert all the way to the base so it comes in contact with the stigma. And then remove it. I'm not going to insert it a few times. All I need to do is go in once and then pull it back out. If you do it too much to, for example, make sure you are effective, what you end up getting is a fruit with a lot of seeds. So you just want to simulate what the natural insect pollinator does. It's not trying to help you get fruit, it's just trying to feed. So it just goes in and comes out. You want to simulate that. And now you want to make sure that there's a way you can identify this flower as being one that has already been pollinated. And you can tie a piece of yarn on there, but I like to do this. It's very simple to mark it so that you don't go back and do extra work unnecessarily. You just take, uh, hold on, there you go. You just take one of the petals and break off the tip of it, like I've done here, which doesn't harm or interfere with the pollination process at all. And there you go. Now you've marked it. So anytime you see a flower with a broken petal, because it never happens in nature, you know that you've been there and you don't need to do it again. Here's another nice flower to pollinate. And we just go all the way to the base and take it out. And then you break a petal and you're done. Notice how this is a solitary flower right on the main trunk. This is nice. This has the potential to be a nice big fruit. If you go over here, however, there's a, more than one flower. And there's one right here, which I still have enough pollen left on this brush to pollinate. So I'll do that and break the petal off. But these others, I'm not going to bother to pollinate. Not even, just because all you need is one fruit on this branch. It's a little thin 3 8 inch branch. One fruit, as you know, cherimoyas can be pretty big. That's enough. 
Although the Cherimoya blossom isn't the most beautiful, exotic blossom in the world, what it lacks for in its appearance, it makes up for in the aroma. One of the nice things about pollinating by hand is you're in and amongst the canopy and you're surrounded by these flowers and this wonderful aroma that it's much like the flavor of the fruit itself. Kind of a calming experience. It's an amazingly delicious fruit and it can grow here all throughout Southern California. Have fun growing.